Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first ever LuxXL webinar. Now, this webinar is part of a series, and as this is the first webinar, it will give you a broad base of what LuxXL does and how we can collaborate with you to create the eyewear of the future. Today's webinar will take about 30 minutes, and during the webinar, you have the opportunity to uh, send over your questions. And at the end of this uh, webinar session, we will do a Q&A session. And I will try to consolidate all of your questions uh, you entered during the webinar. All the questions will be published at our website after this webinar, so you can browse through our frequently asked questions section and find the answers you might need. Let me start by introducing the panelists for today. The first colleague is Guido Groot. He's our Chief Commercial Officer. The second panelist of today is Juan Carlos Dusteler. Juan Carlos is our Senior Vice President of Application Engineering. The final panelist of today is Janet Cunningham. She's our Director of Business Development. And my name is Eva Flipse. I'm the Marketing Manager for LuxXL. So Guido, are you excited to get started with this webinar? If so, I will hand over the slides to you. Thank you, Eva. Yes, um, sure. Um, welcome everybody also from my side. Uh, we're really excited to be able to uh, explain um, LuxXL, LuxXL technology and the opportunities it brings to the world. Um, so well, let's get started with it. Um, so first of all, about LuxXL. We are the only company in the world able to 3D print lenses. Our customers, the customers that have our technology use it to ship daily lenses to end customers. So people are wearing our lenses every day. So um, that's pretty exciting. And uh, how did we get here? Um, we started in 2009 with this technology. And at the time, nobody thought it was possible to actually 3D print lenses. It was like the ultimate frontier. So um, we felt uh, it was possible. So we started developing it. And since we started uh, in this space, we basically, since we were the only ones at the time, we basically own all the IP in this space. And we're very happy about that. And we'd like to keep it that way. Um, how do we want to use this technology? We try not to do what everybody else does. This is a unique technology and it offers unique opportunities. So what we try to do with this technology is to really create the eyewear of the future. And I've said it there, we are 100% focused on eyewear. We're not doing anything else. We want to make sure we understand this space and that we make sure that um, we know what our customers need and that we know what we can deliver to them. So first of all, why eyewear? Well, there's 7 billion people in the world. 4 billion of them need vision correction. The popul world population grows every year and also the eyesight of people is deteriorating. So eyewear correction, so vision correction is really something humanity needs. This really will make a difference in the world. And we feel that with our technology, we can really improve the lives of many people and it's of course a, a huge uh, market there's a lot of volume of products that uh, need to be delivered and it really will make a difference in the world and we're happy that with our technology we can do that so what is different between eyewear and other products so first of all when you go to an optician to have your eyes measured they'll give you they'll measure your eyes individually and you get your prescription that is your prescription it's not it's not similar to somebody else it's not the same as somebody else's prescription it's your prescription which gets exactly to the point that you cannot simply stock all these lenses because every person has an individual need and so the legacy eyewear industry has developed ways to deal with that by large inventories of semi-finished lenses and uh, many process steps to actually customize this semi-finished lens to your needs and it requires a lot of inventory a lot of work and um, it doesn't always deliver you the lenses immediately when you need it so we saw this and we said that is something that we can correct with 3d printing what you can do is you can make volume products in volume but you can make them individually customized to the customer needs so instead of having huge inventories of stuff sitting around, you can make the product when customers need it. And so this is the fundamental reason why 3D printing of lenses is an absolute need 
for this world. And uh, we hope to show you a little bit what we can do to uh, make these uh, lenses of the future. So um, before we go into those details, Janet, can you explain our audience a little bit how this technology works? Absolutely. Thanks, Guido. So a lot of people have probably seen 3D printers, but our 3D printer is very different. So how does it work? Here's an animation that shows some of it. So with tiny droplets, we build lenses out of our material called Vision Clear. And there are about a billion droplets of this material per lens. So they're very, very small. We currently print four lenses per substrate. At the end of the process, it requires no polishing. So it's ready to go in the lab for traditional processing and coatings that are needed. Here are some examples of lenses that can be made in the printer in time-lapse photography. And our current customers print ophthalmic lenses. So these are examples of lenses that they have an interest in printing for their customers and their customers' patients. They would be difficult to make in legacy methods in the lab, and it would slow down production. So these are of value to our current customers. So since we were the first in this space, we developed all of the components to make all of this happen. So we don't outsource, all of this belongs to us. So we create 3D printed lenses with the vision platform. And within the vision platform is a printer, the material, the software, the support in the lens design and marketing tools. So this is why we don't take a different type of lens design software. We use our own lens design software to create it. So it's easy for you to create lenses using our entire ecosystem because we have all of the components that you need. So why would you want to 3D to print a lens? Obviously there are other lenses out there that can be used, but 3D printing offers a number of advantages. So it's more efficient and it replaces about 30 different process steps in the lab. And many of those process steps are very toxic and they have a lot of different materials in them which must be disposed of that are toxic. And they're difficult to dispose of because they're environmentally caustic. So how, and we also reduce the waste when we 3D print about about 90% because we're printing what we need, what not what needs to be stocked. And when we customize products with a 3D printer, it allows us to make products for people with things such as bifocal reading areas in spaces that are tailored to the patient's needs. And this allows us to make lenses that don't exist today and lenses of the future that we hope to make with our joint development partners, which we will talk about in a bit. And we hope that these will be market disrupting products that change the face of eyeglass lenses today. So Guido, would you like to share a little more about our vision for 3D printed lenses? Yes, thank you, Janet. So um, I, I alluded to this before, what is it that we're trying to do with this amazing technology? So if you look at the eyewear industry at the bottom, there's uh, the whole eyewear, the existing ophthalmic the prescription lens industry place in this space at the bottom. So basically large volumes, low value products, uh, relatively low value products. So basically everybody plays in their space and everybody basically does the same thing. And because everybody does the same thing, it's a lot of uh, price pressure. The only way to differentiate are the little things. So what we said is, you know what? This is an amazing technology. It is unique. It offers completely different um, possibilities to uh, to companies and to people to, to to products if you like so what we said is you know what we're first going to prove this technology works so what we said is uh, we're going to figure out a couple of niches what's called specials here in this chart so in those niches we'll prove this technology works every day of the week and that's what we have done these past years so we've installed our technology at a couple of customers and they use it to make lenses every day of the week and people are wearing our lenses every day of the week. So we've proven our point, 3D printed lenses are real. They work, they're real, people use them. So that's the point. Yes, 
no doubt the technology is there. What we really want to do is we want to make the eyewear of the future. With our technology, you can do unique things that are not possible with legacy technology. And that is really where we want to make a difference. We think with this technology, you can really innovate the eyewear industry. You can innovate the product that those 4 billion people wear every day. So we started off by saying, you know what, in the smart wear, there's, uh, there's a couple of companies that have nice products, interesting products where they have uh, put um, LCD screens or other technologies in front of the eyes of the people. And what we said is, you know what, we're going to start off by adding prescription to those, to those devices so that we can help people actually use these lenses every day. So the primary function, of course, of eyewear is to uh, make, improve people's vision. So what we said is we'll print prescription to add to existing technologies. It's a simple way of entering the smart market. And uh, this is something you could potentially do with some difficulty with legacy technology. But uh, you know, for us, it's a good starting point. Prove our point. Yes, we can add prescription to smart already today, but we can do more. We can go where the legacy technology cannot go. We can do things that is not possible uh, to achieve with um, traditional technologies. And Juan Carlos, can I ask you to maybe explain our audience a little bit what those things are? Of course, Guido. Uh, as we have seen before, we are creating our lenses by uh, jetting uh, billions of tiny droplets onto a particular substrate. So uh, this is a very natural way uh, to embed things and to embed functionalized uh, foils or other types of objects into our lenses. So imagine, for example, that we are willing to embed a waveguide. Uh, then we can uh, put the waveguide uh, as a, the substrate we begin jetting droplets on the front surface. We create an optical surface from that. Then we flip the, the ensemble over, and then we create the second surface, as you can see in, in, in the depiction there. So by this uh, process, what you get up is a complete lens uh, with ophthalmic properties. Uh, that you can even create a, a freeform surface that contains a functionalized uh, foil or any other object that could be uh, really making a smart glass or, or wh whatever you can imagine that you can embed into a, a frame, um, a lens. So uh, uh, things that we have been doing in the past for uh, making proof of concept is, for example, embedding an electrochromic foil together with the electronics so that it can be uh, stimu stimulated by voltage and then it gets uh, it, it lowers the transmission so it gets darker. Uh, we, we have been tried also to embed um, LEDs, transparent LEDs that uh, contain the, the, the wires so that you can activate them uh, according to, to software. You can also integrate RFIDs inside uh, or any other electronic components. Moreover, we can make the lenses full diameter or we can make them uh, as tiny as, as needed. So it is a really uh, versatile technology that can have a lot of opportunities. If we look at the materials on the technology platform, uh, you can see in the slide how the machine looks like, how the vision engine looks like, together with a depiction of a person for reference of size. So it could be uh, considered to be large, but it is kind of a lab, a printer that com it, it, is, it is a complete lab. So uh, it is a very uh, performance um, machine which uses uh, our vision clear material, which is of refractive index 15225, with an AVE value of 45 that ensures that you will not experience a chromatic aberration, that uh, produces lenses that are ISO and ANSI compliant. They pass the drop bolt test, and the density, it is uh, only 115, which is very lightweight. 
we have been certifying all these technologies and, uh, and platform uh, to obtain the certification of uh, of Talmic lens quality by cold laboratories on the focal power, minimum robustness, uh, robustness, and other types of certifications. If we look at uh, the transmission and the behavior of the refractive index, you can see that uh, we are uh, getting UV, we are uh, going into a very high transmission comparable completely with existing uh, ophthalmic lenses and also the behavior of the refractive index, it is very similar. Moreover, the roughness of our surface is around seven nanometers, which is also comparable to polished lenses made by other technology. So as Janet mentioned before, we don't need to polish anything because the, the, the machine uh, already creates a, a lens that is optically active and that uh, has the right roughness to uh, eliminate any haze and to be uh, completely comparable with a, a polished lens, so to speak. So all these uh, things, all this technology has a lot of possibilities that uh, make sense to create joint developments and to make this uh, create uh, uh, good products uh, for different of your uh, different applications you can imagine. And I think that uh, Hido can explain better than me what is the process. So thank you, Juan Carlos. So first of all, let me tell you something that we're not. We are not a service bureau. So you cannot send us a design. I will print your design and ship it back to you. What we are, though, is we are a technology company. And we, with our technology, we can make unique products. And what we can do is we can add prescription. We can add um, lenses to other technologies. So what we'd love to do is create, the, like we said earlier, we, can, we want to create the eyewear of the future. And so what we want to do is we want to take up a challenge to develop a product together with our partners a product that can really revolutionize eyewear. And so we are looking actively for people who will have that same vision, who have a technology that uh, requires prescription, requires a lens, where we can add or print on top of their technology and create really truly together, we can create truly unique products that revolutionize eyewear and the world with it. So our objective is to select these products that we where we believe we can really make a difference, develop those products together with our partners, but where we really want to go eventually, of course, is have our printers installed at our customer sites, making these products of the future. We really want to make sure that uh, we make these unique products in volume, such in such a way that um, everybody in the world eventually will have access to smart eyewear or the eyewear of the future. And so um, if you have a product like this, if you have a unique product where you're struggling to get it really integrated into a form factor that people can wear every day, give us a call, reach out to us. We'd be more than happy, more than eager even to develop this together with you in order to really uh, change the world, which is our objective. So what we have shown here, um, all our panelists, is uh, who is LuxXL and what do we do? So what we do is truly unique. We're the only company in the world able to print lenses. And we've explained to you how this works, how we build lenses with individual droplets. And this is truly amazing. It's really, it, 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 um, it excites me every day I see when I see a lens being printed to see this lens being created in front of your eyes and coming out of the printer ready to be used. It's really exciting. You should, uh, you should come and visit us and we'll show it to you. So what's this technology allows us to do, and we've tried to show you that today, it allows you to make truly unique lenses. It allows you to really make the eyewear of the future. And LuxXL is a company that has, a, we have a truly deep knowledge of 3D printing of lenses. We understand ophthalmic eyewear, and we're, have a th we have a lot of experience in integrating all kinds of exciting stuff into our lenses. If you have a product that really requires that, we'd love to work with you. Uh, so that together we can really change the world, which so with um, as far as eyewear goes, let's uh, <laughs> let's be clear on that. Um, so I hope what we explained to you in this first webinar 
um, clarifies what we do and what it can mean for you and for the rest of the world. Um, there might be, of course, uh, more questions that we didn't answer in our presentation, and that's why we have the Q&A session. Eva, um, how do we take it from here? Thank you, Guido. We're now getting ready for the Q&A session. And while we were hosting this webinar, in the meantime, I tried to consolidate your questions into the more generic ones. Let me change my screen where I can show the questions and then the panelists will answer the questions. If there are any questions that we do not address in this Q&A session, uh, please go to our website and there you can uh, find more questions and answers. Uh, and of course, you can always reach out to us directly. Are the material specifications similar to regular ophthalmic lenses? Can you elaborate on that? Yes, of course. Uh, they are completely in line of uh, the regular ophthalmic uh, materials. So this is uh, uh, Vision Clear is a polymeric acrylic based uh, material of one five to three uh, refractive index, which is very similar to the one uh, in the industry. Aber number is 45, so no chromatic aberration per perceived. Uh, the, the quality of the surface is completely comparable at seven nanometers roughness. So all the material specs are uh, completely uh, in line, as said before, with the regular ophthalmic industry. Another question everyone asks is, are 3D printed lenses cheaper compared to the alternatives to regular lenses? So Janet, can you elaborate on that? Sure, this is a question that we get a lot, Ava. As Guido mentioned, we are targeting products that are difficult to make or impossible to make in legacy manufacturing. And legacy lenses have been made for hundreds of years, so these standard products would be cheaper now than 3D printing. But the thing is, we don't seek to be Me Too. We want to create market disruption. So those lenses will be slightly more expensive, but in time, they will also decrease in price. So, Janet, webinar attendees are wondering, is this technology commercially available today? Yes, this is a good question because a lot of people think that this is a theoretical product or something that maybe could be made or it's prototyping, but that's not the case at all. We have five printers running on a daily basis and commercial lenses are printed daily and shipped to patients daily. So, Guido, as the visionary brain of our uh, company. Can you uh, give the audience some examples of elements you envision uh, we might embed in lenses? Well, uh, thank you for that, uh, first of all, Eva. <laughs> um, well, I think really the sky is the limit. You can, um, I mean, we can put many different things into our lenses. And uh, I mean, some examples is you can, of course, add decorations to lenses. You can insert foils or films inside a lens. And those films can be active or passive. They can be LCD screens. They can be sensors. They can be cameras. I mean, really, like I said, the sky is the limit. I mean, to give you an example, you could have um, uh, a cyclist that wants uh, you know, an indicator that there's a truck behind him. I mean, that's a simple example of something we could integrate into a lens, but it can be more complex. You can have an LCD screen that actually uh, reads you back uh, or shows you your, your emails or shows you um, navigation directions. I mean, there's so many things you can put in smart glasses. And basically with our technology, we can print prescription on top of anything you really like. Uh, Janet, I received a question. Who will provide the frame and the electronics to create these products? Okay, thanks, Ava. That's a good question, too. So I would refer you back to the joint development process that we have in our webinar, in which we collaborate together to take our technology and your ideas to make a great product and a unique product for the industry. There are a lot of people who do make both components for the frame and the electronics, but if you don't do those two things, we can work together to find someone to help make these components all come together. But we 3D print the lenses. We do not make frames or electronics. So Juan Carlos, this particular question is uh, really one for you as the lens expert at LexXL. 
Um, attendees wonder uh, what are exactly the differences between a 3D printed lens and a regular uh, legacy lens. Yes, Eva. L let me answer this in a two-way fashion. So, on one side, you can have exactly in the minimal, uh, you can repeat what you can do with a regular lens. The only difference would be that uh, with our technology, uh, the way we, we do that by creating a front surface and then a back surface, uh, this calls for slightly different selection of base curves, uh, et cetera. So, but otherwise it is completely equivalent to a regular lens. You can also put uh, hard coatings uh, on top of them and also anti-reflective coatings. So you can do exactly the same that you could do with regular lenses. But on the other side, the really interesting difference, which makes really uh, a difference here is that all the things that you can do with that, you can create freeform surfaces, which are very difficult to do or otherwise. You can embed uh, um, active foils or uh, cameras or whatever. So you, you can do a whole bunch of things that are not possible with the regular lenses. So thanks for elaborating about the differences between 3D printed lenses and regular lenses. And another question, Juan Carlos, are the 3D printed lenses uh, ready right uh, after printing? And can you apply coatings to the lenses? Absolutely. All the lenses uh, are like any other polymeric lens um, are already mm, there. You can apply hard coatings to enhance the scratch resistance and any other type of normal uh, um, coating that the industry uses. Regarding if they are polished or not, as mentioned before, the roughness of the surface is, corresponds completely to the roughness of a surface, an equivalent surface, but made by polishing. So it is completely the same. So yes, the, the lenses are ready to be used after printing with the normal hard coatings and uh, and reflection coatings. So Guido, with 3D printing technologies you can create objects, but what is exactly the difference between the LuxXL 3D printing technology and what makes our technology so unique? Can you explain a bit more about that? Um, sure, uh, that's a pretty broad question. Um, there's of course, as you said, many ways, different ways to 3D print. And what we do is we build structures with tiny little droplets. And because we build with tiny little droplets, um, we are different than a lot of other 3D print technologies. So because we use very, very small, tiny little droplets, we are very precise. Because we jet many droplets in parallel, we are uh, quite fast. And because we use droplets, the end result is very smooth. Um, um, the other difference you see is that um, 3D printing is very focused on the outside shapes. But because we make lenses, we need to make sure that our material is very consistent throughout. So not only the outside needs to be exactly according to specification, but also the inside, because to make you don't want any disturbances in your lens because it will be very visible to the user. So our technology is unique in a sense that uh, we do things differently than other 3D printers, but also we focus both on the inside and on the outside. And thirdly, coming back to what Juan Carlos just said, is we, since we build these structures with tiny little droplets, we can integrate items into our lenses, which typical 3D printing doesn't allow. So, uh, Janet, in the webinar, um, we addressed multiple times that we print uh, eyewear lenses today. Uh, however, the webinar attendees are wondering if we can also print other types of lenses. This is a frequent question that we get. And as you can imagine, since we're the only company who prints 3D printed ophthalmic lenses, people get excited about other projects that they might could do things like lighting or automotive parts, lens arrays, prototyping, et cetera. And we get a lot of requests about all of that. 
but we do not do all of those different things. We only work on eyewear related products and we do offer prototyping, but only within the confines of a joint development project. We will work with our partner to create some products to be sure that we're both on the same path together, but we do not print other types of lenses or offering of prototype services at this time. So we are at the end of the Q&A session. Uh, and Guido, I consolidated some of these questions and jotted it on this slide because they all address uh, basically the same topic. Uh, attendees would like to know more if they can get prototypes, where are the lenses printed and how long it will take to develop a lens together. So can you give them a short explanation uh, which answers these questions? Yeah, sure. Um, I think uh, Janet addressed it a little bit in the previous question. Um, so, but so first of all, we are not a service bureau, so you cannot send us a drawing and we print it for you and we ship you the part. That's not who we are. So what we want to do is we want to develop unique products that really can change the world. We want to do that together with partners. And to change the world, what is required is that we can this product has a potential to be um, to for a certain volume, so that we can justify putting a printer at our customer side to print these amazing and unique products. So what we want to do is we want to uh, pick unique products together with our partner, develop those products uh, in a, in a way that uh, you know prove the point that this product works and then make sure that uh, we can install a printer at our customer side that makes that specific product in volume. So if somebody wants one product, one item of something, then we're probably not the right partner to talk to. But if, it's, uh, if we need to make a prototype as part of this bigger effort, yes, then we're certainly interested in doing that. Um, these projects, I mean, they can take anywhere from, uh, I don't know, from six months to a year or to 18 months to develop it really to make sure everything works and eventually um, we want to make them in significant volumes. So um, all in all, we want to really change the world. And uh, that's what we want to use this technology for. So if you have a product that can help do that, uh, give us a holler. Well, thank you, Guido. And thank you, Janet and Juan Carlos, for answering the questions uh, the webinar attendees have. If we uh, did not answer your question, uh, please go to our website. We will make sure that we update our frequently asked questions section. And if you have a particular or specific question, you can reach out to uh, my colleague Janet or myself. Uh, you can find the contact details in this slide. So thank you for attending this webinar. We will be happy to discuss any ideas or projects you might have in mind. And yeah, make sure to keep an eye on our website for uh, future webinar sessions. And yeah, we're happy to help you and to get in touch with you to create the eyewear of the future.